makes the night enchanted. It brings music to the evening, but it becomes like a cricket background soothing noise. Well, this is the Koki Frog Sanctuary and Nature Preserve, and right now we're sitting in the, our Koki Cottage, uh, which is where guests come uh, who would like to enjoy the ambiance of the, the tropics and the Kokis. Well, what you have here is a beautiful rainforest setting here in Lower Puna on the Big Island of Hawaii. There's rain falling on our metal roofs. There's uh, making a, a beautiful pitter-patter sound. And the Koki frogs are just waking up now to the evening. So it's, uh, we have an enchanted night of Koki song ahead of us. What you hear now are the Kokis in the background. It's pretty much evening and this is about um, as loud as they get. We have jungle all around us, rainforest, undisturbed rainforest, which is where they like best. If you have more grass, less trees, there won't be as many. They, they vary depending on the, the environment. And here we have undisturbed old jungle rainforest that they just love. Well, here in Hawaii, they have really <laughs> given the Kokis a bad rap. On my shoulder. It's actually a very Hawaiian tradition to have a place of refuge for a condemned criminal. In the old days, if someone was condemned and they found their way to this place of refuge, they were spared. And we think the koki has been given a really bum rap in Hawaii. I mean, they're a wonderful animal. They're an innocent little tree frog. Of course, in the beginning, uh, we heard all the propaganda against them, like, oh my God, it's going to be, you know, terrible. You're going to lose your sleep over it, all this kind of stuff. And yeah, I was thinking, well, you know, geez, you know, I, I might have a problem sleeping with them. And so we were worried about it a little bit in the beginning until we got them. And it was great. We love them. I mean, it was like, oh, wow, you know, what is that a, a nighttime bird or something? And uh, it's, it's been really um, a great thing, I think, for Hawaii, contrary to what some people may believe. And uh, I think people are, are going crazy about it. They're hysterical and the frogs need a need a break and that's what this place represents it's it's a refuge for the frogs uh, we're not telling people to bring them here but if there's frogs that ever do get here they're they're going to be safe we're going to protect them and we feel that they're they need protection frogs around the world need protection you know the biggest thing that people have against the frogs is their sound this is the sound of chirping frogs is a natural sound and I, I feel really bad that people are attacking the frogs for being an animal that makes a noise. Uh, they're a lot less noisy than what we humans do and they're a lot less noisy than a lot of other animals. They're really like a bird. Some people have a real trip with them. I just recently have been talking with some people that are avid koki haters. In fact, they coat their property with lime just to keep, hopefully, keep the frogs away. Change is difficult for some people, to the point of doing really irrational things, like spraying acid into the forests, bulldozing, uh, spraying. Some people have actually, you know, put flamethrowers into the forest. Uh, they put gasoline. I mean, all sorts of irrational things. And the fact is, you can't get rid of the, the kokis. And it's really too bad that a lot of people are uh, have this kind of attitude, and the government in Hawaii is promoting this attitude in people. And uh, we want to, to show the way of acceptance to people. We've been doing this since 2001 in our group called CHIRP, uh, which is a, an a group that we formed, the Koki Hawaiian Integration and Re-Education Project. And its goal is to, uh, to counter the propaganda, the anti-Koki propaganda, that has been really perpetuated by an industry of eradicators that work in the government and out of the government who are invested in a crisis in getting funding to deal with that crisis and perpetuating that funding. And that's what we're seeing. They've spent millions trying to spray the frogs to no avail. Uh, it's cruel burning the frogs to death with acid, which is the, the method that they use. And these kokis take like 45 minutes to burn to death. If they did that on the mainland, these people would be arrested for animal cruelty. And here, it's being encouraged by the government. It's a real mistake. An invasive species has to be a negative thing. It has to be a threat to something. The kokis aren't a threat to anything. They, they're good for the environment because they eat invasive insects. You know, Hawaii was a rock. Everything had to get here. 
and we've gotten a lot of invasive insects over the years. They're constantly coming in, and we have so few insectivores or, or animals that eat insects that we're really lucky to finally have the coquille to help try to reach a balance with the insect population. On the big island, the coquille frog is here. Uh, they're all over the island, predominantly on the east side, but they're everywhere, basically, and they're wherever they aren't, they're going to get. And if we accept that, we could use this as an opportunity and not as a problem, because otherwise we're going to be beating up the big island as a, an infested, frog-shrieking you know, place, which is what the media is saying. The pro it's not that. People go to Puerto Rico to hear this sound. Millions of people living in Puerto Rico love this sound. They adore it to the point that this frog is their national symbol. And people carry sounds of the koki with them when they travel to help them sleep because such comforting, soothing sound. There's this little koki doll. This is the most popular toy in Puerto Rico. Well, we ha now have a, Hawaii, a Hawaiian version of the koki doll. And you probably won't hear this well, but when you squeeze it, it makes a little cokey sound. We've sent one of these recently to the governor. They're brand new and they're not in the stores yet, but um, we think that people will really like them. And I think we need to embrace the frog because that is what's here. That's, that's the future, that's the present, and uh, change is happening. There's nothing wrong with it. Frogs are going extinct like a dinosaur, and I think we should be really fortunate, feel fortunate to have Cokies here. It might be one of the last places on the planet that is a safe, healthy haven for frogs. Oh yeah. Yeah, it would definitely change and transform people's whole attitudes against everything if they have an attitude already.